Okay, so today we're back on board. It's after 4th of July. Uh, I worked all weekend um, working on the boat and doing charters and stuff like that. But uh, today our focus is going to be the steering system on Santee, our 1970 um, Garby that we have um, up for sale. We've got it back in the water. Been trying to do a whole video on it being back in the water, um, but we just, you know, it's been out of the water since 2018. So there's just been a lot of things that we've uh, just tried to roll through to get back up and running. And I don't really know the boat and it's an old boat. And there's a lot of systems. There's a lot of stuff that's been done and redone. So you just never know. You got to learn all the systems basically all over again and try and figure out what other people did. So quick rundown on the steering system. So it's been sitting since 2018. Hynautic uses uh, a steering fluid. A lot of times you can use ATF um, fluid like the Dextron Micron, the red stuff, um, which I think is what's in, in this boat. So that's what I'm using to refill the cylinder with. Um, I'll go down and show you that. But basically, um, it's a pressurized system. It should be about 40 to 45 PSI. Um, and there was nothing on it, which is not surprising. I've got systems that have literally zero pressure in them. They work just fine, including Hatteras. It's had zero pressure in it for God knows how long. It works perfectly. Um, it's literally just to keep the, the fluid going in it. But if you can see, that spins pretty free, freely. It just spins around. And uh, now it's starting to get a little harder, a little harder, and really hard. So that means I'm starting to build the pressure up on the starboard side of the cylinder and uh, the port side. And so I've got to rotate this about 60 times one way, back the other way. And then I'm going to go up to the bridge and then I'm going to do the same thing. There's another helm station up there. And then in the back, which I think I closed up the other day, we've cleaned everything in here and wiped everything down. It looks really nice. The cushions and everything are really pretty decent shape. So underneath here on these old boats is your access to the rudder room. And all the way down in there is our rudder room. And so that system right there, that's where we're gonna start bleeding it from. That's our bleeder. And then that cylinder right there is our cylinder arm that moves the rudder back and forth. And if you notice, that wow it's, it's a steamer down there i've also been trying to work on air conditioning the rudder is straight in this direction then comes across so that, that means that the rudders are in a straight position so that's good except for i'm turning the wheel and then that's not moving so i've got to get that post to turn left and right once i do that then i've got the system bled out and it works on both sides same thing back here. It seems as though that somebody has defunct some of the lines and there is, they just put valves on. And so I don't really know what valves work and what they do or where they go. So I've got to figure all that stuff out as well. But um, that's the main cylinder that moves the rams back and forth. And then that right there is our old school autopilot. So that is a pump, which then moves the fluid back and forth and goes through this system right here and then that manually or automatically moves the system back and forth. So um, I'm gonna go check pressure because I've moved it a little bit, see if it's gone down, repressurize it, make sure that there's still enough fluid in the cylinder box and uh, or the tank, reservoir tank, and then uh, move on from there. Okay, so now I'm up on the bridge, Ross Marine, all new docks, dry stack, actually kind of cool, nice place. Um, so if I take this, See how it spins pretty freely? So I've got to do the same thing here. I shouldn't be able to spin the wheel like this. And this is literally a game of who can last the longest, um, either the hynotic system or you spinning it. And really this is kind of the way you do it. This gets all the fluid up, gets through the bearings on the backside. See, it's starting to get tough now. You can hear it, hear it change. So I'm starting to get fluid up to the bridge here. So I'm gonna turn it in this direction a few more times. Now, if I turn it back in this direction, there's probably nothing on that. See? But now it's starting to get tight again. So I'm starting to get the air out of the system. So about 60 turns each. 
and then back down and I'm gonna check up, it's getting loose again. So that's air coming out of the system. This is like literally just stay in the course, just turn the wheel, turn the wheel up and down, check your reservoir. I'll go down and check the reservoir in a second and I'll show you that part down there, but I'm gonna keep on turning this just for a little bit. Okay, so here's the reservoir. So if you see a tank that looks like this, it's probably high nautic and high nautic steering. Here's your gauge right here. I've got it up to 40 pounds. Um, I've got maybe an inch or two just left in the reservoir here. So all of this is filled up with um, ATF fluid. Again, you can use it, um, but there is a specific type. Actually, if you go on high nautic, there's like five or six different types of fluid that you can use in this system. I'm using ATF fluid and I'm using the red um, Dextron um because that's what i see that was in here originally so that's what i'm using um that's your little schrader valve right there so that's a little bike valve i've got my handy dandy electric pump and i can set the um, pressure on here i plug it into here i turn it on and then the gauge goes up. Now, a lot of times if these things are leaking and over time the gauge goes back down to zero, there is actually an O-ring right in here. And a lot of times that's what's, that's what's leaking. Um, you're actually not, if you're especially, assuming you're not leaking any fluid from the cylinder or something like that, it's usually coming out of that O-ring right there. So just replace the O-ring and sock it back down again and see what happens. I'm holding pressure uh, around 40, 40 pounds so that's good that means I don't have any leak anywhere and everything is tight um, and I haven't lost much fluid here either so everything's pretty pretty solid um, I've just got to finish bleeding out um, all the water that's in there or all the air that's in there so I'm sweating it's like 130 inside of here so I'm gonna go back out again and um, check everything and then bleed the bleeder in the back and um, check the cylinder, see if anything's coming out of there. If there is, I'll show you that. Weeks ago. All right, so Matt just got on board. Right. We're uh, sweating like pigs down here. It's literally like a sauna. I actually have my shirt off today, which is unusual. It's gotta be 120 down in here. Anyway, so now I'm back in the, uh, the rudder room and I had Matt up on the steering wheel, me back here so I could see what was going on. Um, again, this is our autopilot system here. Um, here's where the, the fuel come, the oil comes in. And then this is our diverter valve here, one here and one here. And it would, I could see it move like it wanted to. And I bled this and I bled this and there's no bubbles coming out. It's not spitting anything. So I've got good pressure and it seems like it's moving. So something else is going on. So I disconnected that, which is the rod that connects the two rudders together. So they move in harmony and I can't get this rudder to move at all. Great, let me see if I can get this one to move, which is attached to the arm. Couldn't get that to move, so I've disconnected the piston, which is our steering mechanism. So, as you can see, I had Matt turn the wheel, and he loves the way it feels, and look how far away we are now. So it moves freely. So we have the steering system primed. The problem is, is that our rudders are frozen. Now I got a little grease gun here. I've already put some grease in the little grease fitting right here. That's a grease fitting right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, that little thing. So I put grease in there and you can see that there's grease on top. Um, so we're gonna have to use a lever to try and break these rudders free and then we can put it all back together again and then our rudder system will be done. So sometimes it's not as easy as just filling up the system and bleeding it. Remember, this thing's been sitting here since 2018. So to get a lot of this old stuff back up online it takes a little bit more uh, ingenuity than just priming a system. So I've done this a long time. I know what it, I know what it seems like. I know what it feels like, and I know when it's bled out properly. So I knew something else was going on. That's why I disconnected this, and it works fine. So now next project to get these rudders to be broken free. But that's how you basically, oh, back here, here's your ram, right? So if you if there's no bleeder here, which you can kind of use that as a bleeder, that's sort of a set, but anyway, I'm not touching that because I don't want that popping off um, and the cap came off of it. So you just crack it here and crack it here and then you'll see the fresh oil coming out here and here. And there was no sputtering, there was no bubbles, nothing like that, so that's that's a good bleed. Um, so I've got good fluid all the way back up to here 
And Matt, the rudder, the steering seems to be fine. Yeah, it felt great. You want to turn it again? Yeah, go ahead and turn it. We'll show them what it looks like. So Matt's going to go to the helm. There you go. Nice and smooth. Go the other way. And goes back out. So nothing wrong with the, the Hynotic system. So it's bled, done, ready to go. We're going to unscrew these rudders here. And, um, and then we'll have our steering system back. And then I'm going to start working on AC because it's hot. That's it. That's how you bleed a Hynotic steering system.